Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is going to be my final, I suspect, video on apple cider vinegar and acid reflux. The purpose of this video is largely going to be answering the frequently asked questions that I get in my other two videos. So about a year ago, I had done a video after 30 days of drinking an apple cider vinegar tonic in the hopes that it would get rid of my GERD or acid reflux. And it did, which was great. But there were some things that I said in that video that weren't entirely accurate. There were also a lot of questions that I tried to address in a six-month follow-up video. But since I continue to get many, many of the same questions, I figured I could just make one video with all of the answers and point people to them, as well as to give a recap and an update after one year of being off of all reflux medications. So to give a little bit of background, probably 16 years ago, I was diagnosed with acid reflux. I'd had this persistent cough. It was sort of a tickle cough that happened, you know, right in here. And it just, it wouldn't go away. No amount of cough medicine would take care of it, nothing. So I wound up seeing an ear, nose, and throat specialist, and he used some tools. It wasn't a scope. He actually, I think, just used a mirror and was able to stick it in my mouth and look down the back of my throat and just see how raw and roughed up it was from the stomach acid. Now, just because I was diagnosed 16 years ago, I think it actually dates back even further than that. I remember back when my wife and I first got married, so this would have been 25 years ago, I was periodically feeling this burning in my throat. It had that feeling like when you swallow a vitamin, a big vitamin, the wrong way, and it goes down sort of sideways and is grinding its way down. It felt like that, but backwards. I got that on a fairly regular basis, but never really connected the dots that it was reflux. So back to the ear, nose, and throat specialist. He said what happens basically is you've got some reflux, you get some acid up into your esophagus, and that then triggers that cough. And when you cough and your chest sort of, you know, condenses, then that squeezes your stomach and you get another little spritz of acid that comes up into your esophagus. And you just get this vicious, vicious circle. So this doctor prescribed omeprazole to me. Back at the time, it was not over-the-counter omeprazole, so it would have been Prilosec. Then over the years, my doctors cycled me through any number of different reflux medications because one would stop working. So we'd go off the Prilosec and go to Nexium. Then we'd go off Nexium and go to Prevacid. Eventually, I wound up being on Pantoprazole, which I think is Protonix is, is the brand. But... I had been on all of these things while simultaneously probably going through an entire container of Tums and acids every week. I ate those things like they were candy. And I never felt as if I was really getting better. I felt that at best I was just sort of holding these symptoms at bay. And then I had seen a video by Dr. Nick Zorowski on apple cider vinegar and this tonic that he created. And I'll link to it down below in the description. And I thought, I'll try it. I'll see what happens. I didn't know anything about stomach acid. I didn't know, do I have too much stomach acid? Do I have not enough stomach acid? I just tried this rather recklessly for 30 days. I went cold turkey off my medication. And I don't know if either of those things were the most well thought out plans, but it fixed me. And now it's been a year, a year since I have taken any sort of acid reflux medication. And I feel great. But enough of that. I'm going to get on with the frequently asked questions. Before I do, though, it's important for me to say the following. I am not a doctor. I am not any sort of a healthcare professional. I have no training in healthcare. Nothing that I say should be considered competent or qualified medical advice. This is just me. One guy sharing his experience, sharing what I did or what I would tell myself. So the first question that I tend to get from people are those that are confused about how this works. How does giving yourself more acid, because apple cider vinegar is acidic, lemon juice, which I also include in the tonic, is acidic, how does this fight acid reflux? It's a valid question. Based on my research, roughly 80% of people that are taking acid reflux medications have low stomach acid 
not high stomach acid. Now your stomach needs acid. You need this to start the digestive process. Fortunately, your stomach, provided you don't have an ulcer, is protected with a coat of mucus on the inside. Unfortunately, your esophagus is not. So if you keep that acid in your stomach, that's a good thing. That helps with digestion. If you don't keep that acid in your stomach and it comes up into your esophagus, acid reflux, GERD. It starts ripping up your esophagus and can eventually lead to cancer. So we don't want that. At the top of your stomach and bottom of your esophagus, there's a muscle, a sphincter muscle that opens and closes. It's the doorkeeper to your stomach. You want stuff to be able to come down in, but not go out. It's called the lower esophageal sphincter or LES. You want the LES to be closed when you're not eating. You don't want acid to come back up. What triggers the LES to be closed is the presence of acid. You need a sufficient amount of acid for that sphincter to close up. If you have low stomach acid, that muscle doesn't close. And the acid, even though it's low, it's still acid. It's still hydrochloric acid in your stomach. It's got a pH of around 1 to 1.5. That gets up in your esophagus where there is no mucus lining and it starts to tear things up. This leads then to the next question, which is how do you know if you have low stomach acid or high stomach acid? Because if you have high stomach acid, you definitely don't want to be adding more acid. But how do you know if you fall into that 80% where you are low stomach acid? There's a very simple test that you can do. Take a small glass of water, four ounces, six ounces, 200 mil, and add a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Then drink this and measure how long it takes you to burp. If it takes you more than five minutes to burp, or if you don't burp at all, then you have low stomach acid. I also often get asked if you can drink apple cider vinegar and if it will help you out if you have a hiatal hernia. I do not have the answer to that. I had a hiatal hernia at one point a number of years ago. I also had an inguinal hernia and got them both fixed at the same time. So I don't have a hiatal hernia anymore. I can't speak to that. Sorry. I get asked, does this tonic or apple cider vinegar work for silent reflux? I believe that's also called LPR. I'm going to say yes on that because that's what I believe I had. I didn't just get refluxy sort of symptoms when I ate. I got them all the time. I'd get them laying down. I would get them when I was sitting at my computer. I would get them when I was sitting around playing video games. So I believe that's sort of the definition of silent reflux and cured me. So now that you've kind of determined if you can drink this, then I get my next series of questions, which is, first of all, should it burn my throat when I'm drinking it? When you first start, it can. Bear in mind, you've caused some damage to your esophagus likely if you've had reflux for any length of time. And apple cider vinegar is acidic. Not nearly as acidic as stomach acid, but it is still acidic. So it's gonna burn a little bit until your esophagus heals. I've also been asked by people, is it normal to get a little bit of a stomach ache when you drink apple cider vinegar? I've experienced that from time to time. Not often, but I know what you're talking about. And yes, I get it from time to time. If you find that this is the case, maybe consume the apple cider vinegar with a little bit of food to kind of buffer it a bit. I get asked an awful lot, could a person just take apple cider vinegar capsules or betaine HCL so you can get that hydrochloric acid in your stomach? I have tried both and did not get nearly the sort of profound results that I did from drinking apple cider vinegar straight up or in a tonic. Your mileage may vary, but for me, it was, it was not worth the cost. People will often ask, should they go off their medication cold turkey once they start drinking the apple cider vinegar? <sighs> this is one I kind of debate. I did, but I had also gone keto prior to starting this apple cider vinegar. And by going keto, the main things that I think helped out with my reflux were the elimination of sugar and processed grains. So if I were to do it all again, or if I were to advise a friend or family member, I would say start by eliminating processed sugars and grains from your diet. Get rid of soda, get rid of bread, get rid of pasta, get rid of cereal. See what happens over the course of two weeks and if you're able to dial back on your medication. But my opinion is once I started the apple cider vinegar, I didn't want it fighting 
with the medication, you know, because the medication is trying to decrease my acid, whereas the apple cider vinegar is trying to increase my acid. And I just felt that they would kind of cancel one another out and it wouldn't be helpful. That's my way of thinking. From there, we kind of get into questions about the recipe, which I will list down below in the description. People will ask about all the different ingredients. Do I need to include the lemon juice? Do I need a sweetener? Do I need the cinnamon? Do I need the ginger? Do I need the pink Himalayan salt? The reality is the main ingredient in this, the active ingredient is the apple cider vinegar. The other ingredients have health benefits. They're in there for a reason. For example, cinnamon helps blunt blood glucose. The pink salt adds electrolytes to your diet. But I think for the most part, they just make this a more palatable drink. If you don't care about the flavor, you can put a tablespoon or two in a small glass of water, maybe add a little squirt of liquid stevia or something to make it slightly less sour and just chug it down. That's what I do now. I don't go through the effort of making the tonic anymore. So the big thing in this is the apple cider vinegar. If you don't want to go through all the other effort. In terms of the apple cider vinegar itself, I don't think brand makes a huge amount of difference. I use the Kirkland brand from Costco that contains the mother. The other question I get is, do I need to use apple cider vinegar that contains the mother? No, I don't think you do. The main thing here is the acidity. The mother does have benefits, digestive benefits. It helps feed your gut biome. So it's a good thing, but it's not critical for the sake of trying to cure your reflux. People ask, do I need to use the liquid stevia? Could I use another sweetener? Could I use honey? If you're not keto, absolutely, go ahead. Probably the most common question that I get from people is when should I drink this? What time of day? And in my opinion, I don't think it matters a whole lot. I would generally try and do it on an empty stomach. Now, I've been doing this for a year and I went from a point where I was drinking this twice a day to now twice a week. I find I can go about five or even six days without drinking apple cider vinegar, without getting any sort of reflux symptoms. And when I do, I tend to get them at night when I'm lying in bed. I start feeling the, the acid. So for me, the ideal time now to take this is before I go to bed. If you find that your symptoms tend to pop up at certain times of the day, drink the apple cider vinegar 30 minutes earlier. That would be my advice. Now I mentioned that it's a year later and I'm still drinking apple cider vinegar. People sometimes think that after 30 days, everything's gonna be all better. Certainly I was cured from the symptoms uh, probably within about a week. I will tell you that days four through six were pretty rough. So if you haven't tried this yet, those are gonna be the days that sort of test you. Those were days when the medications had worn off and I don't think I was yet getting the benefit from the apple cider vinegar. So those were not fun days. But if you can tough through them, you will be rewarded. But don't expect that at the end of 30 days, you can stop doing this. You can likely wean yourself back to maybe a single glass per day, then eventually a glass every other day, and so on. And like I said, I'm to the point now where if I just have it every third or fourth day, I know that I'm getting out ahead of any potential symptoms and keeping them at bay. People will ask, does this change what you can eat? Because there's so many different food items that we're told we shouldn't eat when we have acid reflux. We should stay away from coffee and chocolate and liquor, especially things like red wine, tomatoes, spicy food, etc. I have found that since I started drinking apple cider vinegar, none of these affect me. None of them cause me symptoms, which makes me happy because I like all of those foods. The one thing I will say that seems to affect me a bit is hard liquor, especially brown liquors, bourbon, scotch, whiskey. So I'm not saying that you will necessarily be safe to eat all of these foods, but I have found that I have been. Your mileage may vary. The final two questions I get are related to, are there any health risks related to drinking apple cider vinegar? The first is related to your teeth. This is acid. This is some fairly strong acid. It's stronger than drinking a Coke or something like that. So not great for your teeth enamel, which is why I recommend if you're gonna drink the tonic, drink it through a straw. If you're gonna do what I do nowadays, which is a tablespoon or two in a little glass of water, and I just tilt it back, I slam it down. The next thing I do is I rinse my mouth a couple of times just to get that acid off my teeth. In terms of any long-term health issues, there have been very, very few documented issues. And I tried doing a lot of research. 
There are a couple where people have developed problems with their esophagus or larynx. In one instance, the woman that had this problem was drinking 250 milliliters of apple cider vinegar daily for six years. That's eight and a half ounces for those of us in the States here. That is a lot of apple cider vinegar. There are far, far, far more studies that show the benefits of apple cider vinegar. And I will link to an article out on Healthline down below in the description that talks about some of those. So I hope that this video was able to answer any potential questions you may have about drinking apple cider vinegar to get rid of your acid reflux or GERD. If you're interested in the ketogenic diet and specifically in ketogenic recipes, click that subscribe button, then click the bell to turn on all notifications so that you can watch some more serious keto videos. Thanks for watching.